Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to Virtual Coffee Break with Tanisha. How's everybody doing today? What have, hey. you, what have you done since Tuesday to move your business forward? We last got together on Tuesday. So anybody want to share what they have done since Tuesday to move their business forward? I'll share. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Hey, Rachel. How are you? Hey. I'm doing great. Thanks. How are you? I am amazing. <laughs> Good to hear. Um, so I'm doing Crystal's boot camp. So that has been awesome and I've learned a lot. Good. Um, What's been your biggest takeaway so far from the boot camp? Um, learning how to make posts, like and get making sure I engage, whether it's related to my travel or or my business or you know just in general like um trying to engage people and grab their attention mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um like one of the posts uh yesterday was to post um one of the questions was to ask what movie you can watch over and over again mm -hmm. so um I think that's cool learning how to do uh, make posts and stories and you know um but I've been trying to just blast my party all over social media that I'm having tomorrow night at seven to Did launch my business try? for the first time. Did you say try? I know you didn't say the try word. I heard try. We don't say that word. <laughs> yes, I caught you. But okay, yeah. so you're what you're doing is uh, marketing. That's, that's your pretty much what I've been doing, just trying to share. Okay, don't say try though. You're either doing it or you're not. See, Rachel, when you use the word try, you're giving yourself the opportunity to fail and not doing it. So you always have to speak positive, say you're doing or what your intentions are, but never use the word try. It's almost like you're setting yourself up for failure. So you're marketing your business launch? Is that what you were saying, Rachel? Yeah. Yes. Marketing my business launch. Yeah. For tomorrow night. Okay. So Sweet flyers. are you, are you uh, inviting people or yes. are you posting them? Okay. I was so, just to see if you were invite actually contacting individuals and inviting them to your business launch, or if you were just blasting it all over social media, because that's not inviting. Well, I've been doing both. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And just blasting it on social media, that's, you're not going to get anything from that. You, you definitely want to reach, you want to create your list of mm -hmm. people, your warm market, people that you know that could benefit from the opportunity and you wanna pick up the phone and call them and invite them to your business launch. People who just blast it all over social media, nobody shows up. All right, so keep that in mind, make sure you're inviting. Anybody else, what have you done this week to move your business forward? Stephanie, she says she reached out to some prospects that were introduced to the business previ previously to see if they're ready to start. That's good. The fortune is in the follow-up. I'm telling you, the fortune is in the follow-up. There are people that you've exposed last year who won't be ready until this year. So you want to show them that you're still in it, you're still having success, you're still building, and you still want them you still want their partnership. So that's good. Lorna said, go for the no's. Contacted some people who previously said no when I just started the business. Hey, I know when we spoke about this business opportunity, you weren't interested at that time. Just wanted you to know that much is happening and I don't want you to miss out. That's good. That is a very good follow-up, Lorna. Good job. Good job. Right, Rochelle says she's following up, still doing reels, and today she's working on the travel side of the business. That's good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. 
All right, y'all ready for the topic for today? Y'all ready to jump into it? Let's see what we're doing on uh, Facebook and our Team Lux Platinum group. Let me just jump over there because I don't want to miss anybody. I tell y'all, when I am on, see, that's the wrong thing. I don't even know how to get out of it now. Well, here we go. All right. Groups and Team Lux Platinum. Here we go. All right. All right. So let's get into it. We're going to talk about the, the importance of having an abundance mindset. And I want this to be very interactive um, because this is going to be something that's extreme. You know, if you can control your mind, you can control your money. And a lot of times, oh, we have that self-sabotage because of our mindset. So I want you to think about this. Have you ever been to a nice restaurant, had a delicious dinner in a beautiful environment with great service, then received a bill that nearly made you fall out of your seat? How did that change your mood? Did you walk out of the restaurant raving about the experience or laminating over the bill? Anybody ever experienced that? Delta, talk about it. And, and how did looking at the bill change your experience? Did you let it bother you or did you just focus on, I just had a, an amazing meal? To be honest with you, where I am now, it probably, I, I, I would look at it different, but this was for a, I want to say maybe my last birthday. It was a restaurant. Oh, um, it's down off of Jefferson. I can't, oh, it's, it's I can't it don't think matter. of it. Tell me about your feeling of the, the experience of the restaurant uh, versus when you received the bill. Right. When, when I received, well, it, it was a combination of, um, of myself and my daughter. Uh, when I received the bill, it was, Oh my gosh, <laughs> I forgot about, I'd never been to the restaurant. I forgot about how I felt. I, I, I forgot about the, the, the camaraderie of being with family and friends. When I saw the bill for, for, you know, for the family, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't, we can't go back to that restaurant. Or if we go back to, or if I go back to that restaurant, I can't go with family and friends. I have to go by myself. Cause it was like six, almost $700. Mm -hmm. and I was, Oh, I forgot about the being with the family and what that what I just concentrated on right. was that amount of money. Okay, oh my God, that amount of money. Well, thank you. Mind boggling. Yes, thank you, Delta, for sharing that, Benita. Hello. Uh, this was on one of my husband's birthday. He was at a restaurant, Black and Blue. Beautiful service. Food was delicious. Everything. I told them to give me the bill. When I got the bill, I almost choked. That bill was over a hundred some dollars and my bill was only $20. And I look, he just, he said, what's wrong, honey? I'm like, nothing, nothing, nothing. I dropped my head. I was like, <laughs> I just shook my head like, really? But it was his birthday. Mm -hmm. So I shook, suck it up mm -hmm. and was like, here go my card. Right. He said, Let me see the bill. I'm like, no, I just <laughs> said, your day, so I don't want you to see it. Right. I was shocked because I never went anywhere to see that I had to pay for, but it was his day. So, you know, wonderful man. So I did, but at the end, he did go in my bag and find the bill. He was like, <laughs> oh my God. I said, but it's your day. And then we had another occasion on my mother's 80th birthday. Her bill, we was at a restaurant and it was all of us. Her bill was over, well, the bill was over a thousand some dollars. I was like, I was like, oh my God. But my brothers, all of us just got together because you know, my mother ate their birthday. When she right. looked at it, she could not believe it. But, you know, we sucked it up and was like, this is her day. So, right. but I never saw a bill, $1,100. <laughs> right, right. And that's without, yeah. all right. Amira, I see you uh, trying to raise your hand. Yes, ma'am. So I talked about going into this nice fancy restaurant when we went to the meeting, right? Um, and so- we went with four people and, or it was four of us and the, we were being treated. 
So my husband actually glanced over and saw the bill because she, the a server handed it to the, the, the husband, right? And we were ordering like the good fellas, right? We were ordering <laughs> everything. And um, he was like, order what you want. Experience this, do this, do this. And this was actually the our first time experiencing someone who not only lived a life of abundance, but we're sharing their life of abundance. Like people talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. But they're not actually showing us that they're living it. So they actually brought us into this environment. They were showing us that they were, they were order what you want, order what you want. The check was like $1,500. Mm -hmm. And Mike was like, <laughs> I, he, said, he was like, babe, I don't know if we're going to be able to go back there. And I said, you know what? Even if we have to go back to get a, have a salad and an appetizer, we're we going to make sure that. that we are in this environment every right. time That's because good. there's no reason why we were exposed to this level of abundance if we're not supposed to be involved in it. Exactly. And that was a big, that was a big realization for him. Now he wants to go back for his birthday, just the two of us. And it's right. like, okay, you know, and you know, we're not going to order $1,500 worth of stuff, but right. he's going to eat comfortably and we're going to be okay. And right. I, I try to even, um, I try to remind him that if we continue to have a lack mindset, we're always going to be functioning out of that lack. We're going to be afraid to do big things. Yeah. So even if we have to have a salad mm -hmm. and have a drink or an appetizer, we're going to be there. I so love it. I love like, it. I'm, I, that made me like excited because, and he, he, blinked, he sneezed at it. Like the, he didn't even make it. He like, we breathe 1500 hours. That doesn't make any, it, it's right. cool. What? <laughs> I'm trying to be like that. Right. You know what I mean? I'm trying to be in that environment. I'm trying to, uh, I want to hang around people like that who will sneeze $1,500 and won't blink about it. And you know what I mean? That's what so, we do here. That's what we do here. Let me go to Lawanda and then I'm going to get into this. But thank you for sharing, Amira. That was good. Miss Lawanda, I saw you had your hand up. Um. Okay. Well, when I go to restaurants and it's a high bill. Um, I, I guess I'm different. I always be like, well, it was well worth it, you know, because if I'm paying a lot of money, it must be good. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. So getting back to my notes here, instead of practicing an abundance mindset, why do we tend to focus on the negative aspects of a situation or experience? Hmm. Why, in the case of the restaurant, was it easier to hone in on how steep the bill was rather than immerse ourselves in the outstanding food, lovely ambiance, and the hospitable service? Because instead of focusing on gratitude and abundance, the human brain is wired for a single purpose, survival. Our brain is wired for survival not to make us happy, right? So think about that. So once we understand that, it kind of helps us to understand why we're always going to the negative, right? The mind is not designed to make you happy. It's designed to help you survive. It is always looking for what could hurt you and it magnifies the bad. We are wired to operate out of a place of scarcity and fear. But here's the thing, you have the choice of what to focus on. You can learn how to develop an abundance mindset. Remember, what's wrong is always available, but so is what's right, right? So this is something that we have to be, oh, first you gotta have awareness, right? And understand, okay, my, my brain is wired for survival. It's always gonna focus on the negative. So once you're aware of that, that will help you so much more be able to identify when you start going down that path of scarcity and help you to turn that around and focus on abundance, all right? So what is an abundance mindset? An abundance mindset is the belief that there are enough resources in the world for everyone and of being grateful for whatever the universe provides. It's often talked about in contrast with a scarcity mindset or the belief that the world's resources are finite. When someone gets something, that leaves less for everyone else. You notice how society makes us think that everything is limited? We are literally programmed for failure. 
Did you know that? I'm gonna give you an example. Do you know that the earth regenerates oil? You know, believe the ground, you know how they do drilling in Texas and stuff like that. Did you know that the earth re regenerates that on its own? It does. It does. It, it regenerates itself. But the elites, the people who control the oil industry, they named it fossil fuel. Because what comes to mind when you hear the word fossil? Like it's limited, it's old, there's not a lot of it. So that, that was something that was intentionally done to call it fossil fuel, to give you the impression that there's only a little bit of this. It's been here for thousands of years, but you know we got to conserve this. There's not a lot of it. And why did they do that? So they can charge more money for it, right? So that is just something to, to think about. There's words that trigger us to think of scarcity as opposed to thinking of abundance. These two different ways of thinking can shift our entire perspective. People with a scarcity mindset focus on unfulfilled needs, what others have that they don't. They tend to think short-term and have less fulfilling relationships. People with an abundance mindset focus on what they already have and make peace with the present moment. Because they're not living in a state of fear, they experience many benefits of gratitude and can make better decisions and plan for the future. When you are grateful, fear disappears and abundance appears. Ms. Delta, what came to your mind when you heard all of this? I feel you having an aha moment. I am having an aha moment. It's like something that has been coming to me like here lately has been coming to me a little bit more often from a, a old commercial from long ago. I want to wash that man right out of my hair kind of thing. And I equate that with, I want to wash that, those thoughts out of my, my head and regenerate a new in how I look at things. I can say for me, this business in learning has, has caused me to look at life in a totally different way. It has opened me up. I know that uh, you, we, we have to, we have to um, recondition our minds to, to think. Like I said, we have, we, we've been, we've been um, taught or our brains have, have learned how to, if we learn it wrong, we teach it wrong. Mm -hmm. And we have, we, have, we have to like go into our mind and our mindsets and recondition, it's like wash it out. You know, kind of, kind of reclean it. It's like it, it, there's a spot, so you have to resubmerge it in the water and reclean it to make sure it comes back out to to where it was. And you just have to recondition your mind. You have to re that 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 thought pattern. You have to redo yeah. it different. Gotta redo. It. It. I love it. Oh, I love hey, it. Uh, hey, Kevinika, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Kevinika. Oh, please stop, stay out of my head with this topic. Oh my God. Oh my God. So I was thinking that I was going to miss it, but today the stars align and the sun align and everything else. Okay. So here's my thoughts. I am exhausted of being fearful. That is the most exhausting thing ever of being afraid of something that may or may not even be exist. And so what you were saying earlier, the word that popped up in my head was I have to be intentional because it, this wasn't something that was innate or I was born with, but it is almost as if I was because it's the way of the world. We are yeah. all, we're not actually born with fear. We're yeah. taught to be, well, that's yeah. something that's taught. Yeah. And so again, with the young lady who just say, we do have to be intentional and we have to re rewire our brain. Yeah. Um, the next thing I want to say is I have to be forgiven of myself. And I want to ask everyone else to be forgiven of yourself because you cannot control what you were taught, but now we know better. And so now we know better. So we are going to be intentional about doing better. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And understand that that scarcity mindset 
is tied to fear, which is what Kevin Nikia was saying. And do you realize fear is a form of control? And so anytime someone wants to control you, whether it be, you know, your boss, your spouse, you know, your, your, your job, the government, whatever, church, your pastor, <laughs> they invoke fear in you. And that makes it so much easier to control. So you have to always be mindful and aware of who's trying to project fear into you so that they can control you, including yourself. Because then you're handicapped in yourself, right? Now it's self-sabotage. So if you're putting that own fear on yourself, now you all in self-sabotage mode, right? But it always comes down to that. But if you have an abundance mindset, Fear can't live there. It, it, the two don't go together. They're like oxymorons, right? It's like the kryptonite. They, they, they can't mesh. It's like north and south. Like uh, always have an abundance mindset. Now let's get into signs you have an abundance mindset. Many people go through life without thinking about their mindset. You may be held back by negativity without even realizing it. If you recognize these signs, you may already be on your way towards altitude of gratitude and abundance, having an attitude of gratitude and abundance. You celebrate others in success. An abundance mindset is the opposite of jealousy and fear. You believe that others' successes don't detract from your own and that you will be just as successful. That's good. So I want you to think about this. When you see someone be, you know, getting announced that they just hit their next promotion, what is your initial reaction? Are you happy or are you jealous? Be aware of that. Mm -hmm. If you are naturally, you know, happy for them, like, oh my gosh, could you realize, man, it took a lot of effort to get to bronze as a, as a new person, right? It takes a lot of effort to hit DIT. It takes a lot of effort and work and consistency to hit director. So when someone gets announced that they just hit their next promotion, are you genuinely happy for them because you know they're, they work their ASS off to get it? Or do you feel like, oh, that should have been me? Da, da, da. Like you can't even be happy for them. Be aware of that. Be aware of that. That is very, very important is how you react to someone else's success. Um, you give back. People in a scarcity mindset are too busy taking to give back. If you volunteer your time, energy, or skills, often give away your possessions or enjoy taking care of your loved ones, you're on your way to having an abundance mindset. Think about that. Um, it's funny, this, this makes me think of anytime I have something that I'm no longer needing, not that it's broke or anything like that or, or you know worn or something, I always find someone that I can give it to, right? The person who does my house cleaning services, she has four kids, she's pregnant. Anytime my son's clothes no longer fit him, I give them to her, right? I had furniture when I moved into this house that I was getting rid of, right? And a lot of other stuff. You know, I went into my groups for the community on Facebook and say, who wants this? Come get it. You just gotta come get it. It's free. Whereas people who have a scarcity mindset, sometimes their first thing is I need to sell it and make money. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with putting your stuff on the marketplace, right? To make, you know, some extra money. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying it's not wrong to take all your old clothes and put them in consignment so you can make money on it. I'm not saying that because I believe in multiple streams of income, just like everybody else. But I'm saying, what are you giving to people that are in need? Is it that you're always focused on making money? Or are there some times where you're just like, let me, this person's in need, I have, let me give. 
And those who give the most receive the most. It's just the law of attraction, right? You live in the present. When you focus on gratitude and abundance, you're not worried about the future or stuck in the past. You know that the only thing that's guaranteed is the present and you focus on taking it all in. Annie, what is your, get, I want someone to give me their biggest takeaway of what I just said. What are your thoughts on this? Can you repeat it real quick? Which one, the last one? Yeah, the last one. You live in the present. When you focus on gratitude and abundance, you're not worried about the future or stuck in the past. You know that the only thing that's guaranteed is the present and you focus on taking it all in. Some people are always focused on the next thing and then you miss what's going on right now. Right. And it's funny because it's almost like that conversation I had I had before when someone when I was talking about going to your kid's soccer game or a baseball game or whatever to just be in the moment. Don't be on your phone, you know, trying to, you know, always prospect and stuff like that. Like en enjoy that moment. You'll miss the whole game because you was looking in your phone. <laughs> right. Because you're trying to make your money. And I get that. Amira. She found that hand raised, y'all. Thank you for helping her with that. <laughs> I found a button. I found. Oh, so. There you go. Thank, Thank you, ladies. Um, so I'm reading. I, there's a book that I read. Um, or I follow um, Abraham Hicks and, and uh, Jane Roberts. And they um, just talk about law of attraction, how it benefits us and all this stuff. But one thing that they talk about is... Um, the point of your point of power is in the present. And to me, everything you said, it triggered to me right away. Like if we focus on, cause I, I tend to have, I tend to have anxiety. I texted you this morning, like, oh my gosh, I'm feeling really overwhelmed. And you know what? The best part about that was, is that you acknowledged me being overwhelmed, but you didn't let me sit in it. Let's find the solutions. Let's, let's, let's figure this out. And I think the most important thing, especially when you have people who tend to overthink, tend to get stuck in their heads, they tend to get overwhelmed is or tend to be anxious, is that just redirect into the point of power that's in your present. Presently, this is what we can do. Presently, this is what's happening. Presently, this is where your joy is, where your gratefulness is. This is where the place that you want to be. And I think that or that you are right now, the position that you're in. And I think that focusing on the power that we had in our present moment, instead of feeling powerless, yes. is, the, is the biggest part of what I got of what you said. And I think it's the most helpful is try to focus on the power that's in. I love that. I love that. That's good. That's good. There's power. Miss Delta, I see your hand. Yes. Um, what resonates with me is, and, and what, what I've been telling myself over and over again, I have to learn how to get out of my own way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, how, that's how we sabotage ourselves when we, like, like the young lady just said, we, we overthink things, we overdo things. And when we are in the, in the, in the, in the, in the mindset of overdoing, so, I mean, re reconditioning is fine, but sometimes we can overdo things. And then when in doing that, we get in our way and we mess up. We don't, we don't see the big picture. We don't see, we, it, we can just maybe, it's like in life, I've learned how to, in, in a horse race, the horse is looking one way. Yep. He, uh, he, those blind, you gotta take those blinders off and you gotta learn how as an individual, you gotta learn how to take the, use your peripheral vision mm -hmm. and not sabotage yourself. Mm -hmm. Get out of your own way. And this is what I tell myself, uh, uh, my, 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 um, I call it my accountability partner, but my business partner, she told me all the time, learn how to sometimes uh, uh, listen more, but speak less, get in and get out, say what you got to say, but get out of your own way. Because sometimes you can take and what you need to say, you'll say it, you'll mess up if, if you're trying to uh, um, 
uh, get someone to prospect for, you had them, but because you, I was in my way, I overdid it and I lost prospect. So you got to learn how to get out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Delta. That's good. That's good. So how to develop an abundance mindset. It's natural for many people to operate in a scarcity mindset, especially in the corporate world and other competitive environments. But when you learn how to develop an abundance mindset, you'll open opportunities you never thought possible. So examining or examine, I should say, your limiting beliefs. Limiting beliefs are unconscious beliefs we hold about ourselves and the world which we allow to prevent us from enjoying our lives to the fullest. For example, if you have an unconscious belief that you do not deserve happiness, understanding how to express gratitude will not come easily, even under the best of circumstances. Mm. That's a whole word right there. Limiting beliefs are unconscious. Like you don't even know you have them. It's just, it's just in you. But you got to be aware. There goes that word again. I keep using being aware, aware self-aware that you have those limiting beliefs. Um, because if you have them, then yeah, it's going to be really hard for you to express gratitude, right? I don't know if some of you saw my post today, but my post was, saying good morning. And I said, comment below two things that you're grateful for today. We have to start pulling those things out and making a conscious effort to express um, attitudes of gratitude and thankfulness. And we all have something. I don't care if you woke up today to a eviction notice on your door. You're like, well, Director Burke, well, I mean, what can I be at? You woke up. Some people didn't wake up today. You woke up. That is something to be grateful for. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll deal with the eviction notice, but you woke up for a reason, right? It's something you can turn around, but you have to find something to be thankful for. And I would suggest writing it down. Every day, write down two things you can be grateful for. Or maybe if you're struggling with your social media, you're like, I to post. How about every morning, wake up, post a good morning post, post two things that you're grateful for, and ask your followers to post two things that they're grateful for. Just do that every single day. Your engagement should go through the roof. And not only are you helping yourself, but you're also helping the people that are following you. And people want to be around other positive people. So I challenge all of you to maybe do something like that. Do a good morning post and every morning post two things you're grateful for and do a call to action at the bottom and have your friends comment on two things that they are grateful for and do that every single morning. And man, the difference you're gonna make in your own life as well as the people that are following you, it's, it's, you're, it's gonna be measurable. It's going to be measurable. All right, so as you embrace the process of cultivating gratitude in your life, keep watch for the limiting beliefs you unconsciously hold and examine how they are preventing you from reaching your full potential. Beginning the hard work of replacing your limiting beliefs with an abundance mindset will reveal how your beliefs impact almost every area of your life. This is because our beliefs grow from a combination of life experiences, our knowledge base, our environment, past and present, positive and traumatic life events, results of our past actions and how we envision our future. Adopt more empowering beliefs. Because our beliefs are multifaceted, Unraveling their origin can be a challenge. Replacing them with healthier beliefs can be even more difficult. However, if existing beliefs are an impediment in to the attitude of gratitude you're committed to developing, it will be well worth your time to put in the effort. So what are we saying here? 
it's not going to be easy. This is probably how you've been most of your life. So you're not going to be able to go from a scarcity mindset to an abundance mindset overnight. This is going to be something that you're going to have to put effort in. I know I remember anybody um, read the book or watch the audio, The Secret? Anybody familiar with this? Yes. Right? That is a great, you can find it on YouTube, The Secret, and it's all about attraction, right? It's all about attraction, the law of attraction. And I remember I even bought the little, um, they have like a, a The Secret notebook. And in it, every day, it's it's journaling, basically. But part of the journaling is writing down things that you're grateful for. So all of that, putting the time to doing that will also change your mindset. To overcome your self-sabotaging beliefs, put yourself in a positive mindset by making a list of things you're thankful for. Then practice flipping your limiting beliefs to empowering ones. As you uncover each limiting belief, ask yourself, does this belief take me further along the pursuit of gratitude or does this belief hold me back? With practice and diligence, you'll find that adopting an abundance mindset and attitude of gratitude becomes more natural. Man, I had to work on this big time, mostly with my self-image, calling myself fat. Anybody else have that belief about themselves, you fat? I kept putting that negativeness on myself and I had to change that because just acknowledging, yes, I'm overweight, the scale tells me, right? So it is what it is, my doctor tells me when I go, but by constantly, um, referring to myself as fat, I didn't realize how much of an impact that was having on my mindset about myself in general. So I was just not a happy person because my whole happiness revolved around my weight. And so I had to change that. But man, that was hard because guess what? The weight still stayed there, right? So it's not like that went away and now I'm happy. No, but I didn't make that the focus. I, I, I had to work on not making my weight attached to my happiness. I had to disconnect them. And then I had to say positive things about myself that had nothing to do my, with my weight in order to have that attitude of gratitude. It was not easy. I struggled with my weight my entire life, but man, am I going to allow my weight to dictate my happiness? I had to do something about it, but it wasn't easy. Shamika? Um, I was going to say this whole topic is just kind of reminding me of the book that we're reading for the IMB where entrepreneurs take risks because of faith and employees pay it safe because of fear. And at, uh, well, I read the book, so I congratulate myself for that because I actually got a chance to do that. But um, it was just saying that how gratitude is directed to like um how would I want to say this gratitude feeds our faith mm -hmm. um and so the more you cultivate gratitude for your life experiences the more your faith increases yeah so um I I that just reminded me of this book I was like oh this is just kind of like solidifying it um because I I do um I'm one thing I can't say it is making me more self-aware with what I'm saying, even my thoughts, the people that I'm around, what they're doing. And so um, I think that has, that has, um, that plays a, a big part on having what kind of mindset we have um, as well too as though, those outside forces. But if your inside force is strong, then, you know, those outside forces really can't help you. But I, I mean, I just thought about that, that chapter in the book. That's good. Listening. That's good. That's good. Another thing we need to do, embrace change. Life will never go as planned. There will always be undesirable surprises. Change is inevitable and we must learn to embrace change. The potential for transformation is present in every change life throws our way. 
whether or not we choose to embrace it. Rather than be derailed by unexpected changes in our lives, we must learn to approach change with curiosity. Begin practicing an attitude of gratitude by softening the change, letting it in without a fight. Rather than telling yourself that you have either lost something, have less of something, or will never have what, is, what it is you want, make, a, make the command decision to focus on adopting an abundance mindset and focusing on what you can be grateful for. By learning how to express gratitude under difficult circumstances, you build an abundance mindset into everything you do. This, this is it right here. I know sometimes um, my, my husband, anytime he's driving, it's like the Grand Prix. He just focuses on, I need to get to my destination as fast as possible with little resistance, right? And so, this is Florida. It's a ton of traffic. It's a ton of construction. Like he complains about the light always being red. I'm like, it's red. Like, like it's supposed to be green for you all the time, right? So I, anytime we're like stuck in traffic and he starts, you know, getting, you know, bothered by it, I said, that's just more quality time we get to spend together. He don't say nothing then. He settles down then, right? Because he ain't going to say nothing negative like, oh, I don't want to spend quality time with you, right? But I'm trying to get him to change his mindset about the traffic because it ain't going nowhere, right? If there's an accident, I'm thankful for the accident because I'm like, that was God holding us back because we could have been in the accident. But instead, he caused us to be stuck in this traffic to avoid that accident. So sometimes this is just divine intervention. You know, so you got to look for positive in everything that you do and embrace change. Anybody on here, immediately when change comes, you get rattled. You don't like change. It bothers you. No, okay, that's good. That means y'all have grown. You've been delivered. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> that is awesome. I love that. Embrace the change. I love change. I always have. I love change. I remember moving when I moved from New York to Virginia. I didn't have a job. I didn't know anybody in Virginia. I was excited. I'm like, every day is going to be a new adventure, discovering new places to go, meeting new people. Like, I embraced that change, right? Some people never, never leave their city because they don't like change, they ain't been nowhere. They're not curious about what's outside of the bubble that they live in. I can't even imagine that, having that kind of mindset, that limiting mindset where you're just stuck, right? So what is an abundance mindset? After all, it doesn't mean you are repressing your emotions or living in a state of denial. It means you are making the overarching decision to live in a beautiful state every single day, no matter what happens. Because if the only thing you are happy, if I'm sorry, because if the only time you are happy is when things are going your way, you're not going to be happy very often. And the more you start to make these subtle shifts, the more you can cultivate an abundance mindset, the more you will begin to experience joy and eventually create a new emotional home. And remember, you are, you attract who you are. So if you have an abundance mindset, guess what? You're gonna attract to the business prospects who also have an abundance mindset. And boy, don't we have a compensation plan that can fulfill all the abundance that you want, right? We have the compensation plan for those people who do have a seven-figure appetite or, or a, a eight-figure appetite or a six-figure. We have that, but it starts with you. So write that down. You attract who you are. So who are you? You attract who you are. So who are you? Do you have limiting beliefs right now that are preventing you from moving forward in your business? 
Are you that person that looks at change as a negative thing? Do you, you, do you allow some external force to change your whole day because it happened? Right? There, there's some people who one negative thing can happen and they take the whole day as a loss. What? That's foolish. I always tell my son, sometimes y'all know when these kids be playing video games and if they lose, my son can't stand to lose. Ooh, he can't stand it. And there's a side of him that comes out. That's not good. And I'm always telling my son, maintain control of your emotions. Maintain control of your emotions. I'm always reminding him to do that. Because if you cannot control your emotions, you can't control anything because life is going to happen. We can't stop life from happening. We can only control our reaction to it. And so the one phrase that I heard Mr. Bradley say that stays in my mind is nothing rattles. So when you find yourself getting agitated, irritated, losing poise, just stop yourself and say, nothing rattles. Nothing rattles. I don't care how bad it is. I don't care how many people go on credit hold. I don't care how many people threaten to sign up and disappear and go on witness protection, right? Nothing rattles. I don't care how, how many hours you spent putting that proposal together and then they didn't book with you. Nothing rattles. Nothing rattles. I don't care. You, you ran to get on that Zoom and then it was closed because it maxed out. Nothing rattles. Make that your mantra to help remind yourself that you have to maintain control of your mindset. And the moment you get agitated and bothered, you're going in the wrong direction. Always think of abundance, never a scarcity mindset. Everything that God puts out here for us, there's an abundance of it. You think he just made just a little bit? He only made a little bit of sun, a little bit of air, a little bit of water. Everything he made is in abundance and self-regenerates. Everything. Food. One seed can produce a harvest. Y'all realize that? One seed can produce a whole harvest. When I say harvest, it ain't producing just one. It's not one equals one, right? When you plant a seed, that seed can produce multiple. So also be aware when others are projecting their scarcity mentality on you. When your family are telling you not to do this business, it don't work. It only works for some people, but it ain't gonna work for you. You you allowing them to project that scarcity mentality on you. There you go, Stephanie, kingdom mindset only. Was this topic helpful for anybody? Did anybody have any aha moments? Let's share some takeaways. Let's share some takeaways. We got five minutes. Hey, Robert, I see you in our Team Lux Platinum group. Rochelle? Yeah, this is real good because they remind me also to um, stay away from the negative. When people talk negative, mm -hmm. to just, like you said, nothing rattles. Mm -hmm. And so also when people have that limited beliefs because I belong to an organization like that, always talking down on prosperity. Mm -hmm. So um, this helps a lot. Yeah. You're part of an organization that talks down about prosperity. Yeah, it's not really like, it's like religion. So they constantly bring that up. I'd be running. It's kind of hard. It's, it's not that easy. Yes, <laughs> it is. Yes, it is. No, 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 it, no. Is, it, that's nope. another topic. I'll talk yes, about it. Yeah, that's another time. topic. Yeah. That's another topic. But you have to, and thank you for sharing that, Rochelle. I'm not passing judgment, but I just want to help you. That is a toxic place to be. I'm not going to put myself in an environment 
because I'm in control of my environment. You're in control of your environment. We have to protect what we hear, what we see, and what we say. We, I'm going to repeat that, we, each of you, have to protect what you hear, what you listen to, music, people, whatever, what you, what you see, right? TV, movies, what you watching, what you reading, and what you say, because there's power in the tongue. So I have my, my alarm bell goes off when I hear you say you're part of an organization that talks down about prosperity, because then what else are they getting wrong? I'm just saying, just reevaluate that group, um, Rochelle. Okay, it doesn't sound it's like all... it's in alignment with, with what's right. I don't know. I don't know. But like you said, that's another conversation. Yeah, that's another topic. Yeah, it is. But thank you for sharing that. But that was good for everybody to hear. Because that's, you, you got to, sometimes people are afraid to go against what the majority is doing because it's comfortable, right? It's comfortable when you're going along with what the majority is doing. But do you, re do you realize the successful people are successful? And there's a limited amount of people that are successful, right? You got some successful people, you have some unsuccessful people, right? But the people that are wildly successful, right? That's why we say 1% of the world controls all the wealth, right? So would you agree that there's not that many people, right? There's more people who are struggling than there are people that are wealthy, right? But successful people are successful because they're willing to do the things that the unsuccessful people are not willing to do. Because they don't want to get uncomfortable. And so if you're in an environment, and this is why a lot of times when I tell new business partners when they're starting, you got to set your household up for success. Because some of y'all are sleeping with the enemy. So you got to get that right. You got to fix that. You, you got you to set some boundaries. Because I, I personally will not continue to have someone put their limiting beliefs, projecting their limited beliefs on me. Don't allow people to do that. And don't be afraid to speak up and say, I don't agree with that. And I guess at the end of the day, that's kind of what I'm saying is when someone does that, don't just sit there and be quiet like you agree. Your voice should be heard and be like, I, I disagree with that. So I guess for, for me, Rochelle, just, and you don't have to respond to this, but when I hear what you're saying, that's a conflict of the mindset that we are are teaching in planet marketing versus the mindset of this religious organization you're a part of. That's a conflict there. So if I'm you, I'm constantly feeling convicted. Cause I'm like, well, sh this is my religious belief, but then my business that's trying to help me not struggle anymore is talking about a, an abundance mindset and prosperity. The two don't go together. <laughs> The two don't go together. So you're going to have to, I don't know, rethink that. Shamika, I throw your hand up. It helps. So, oops, I'll, I'll stick out my hands down. Uh -huh. Go ahead, it's Rochelle. Still up. No, 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 my hands are still up. No, it's not. Okay. No, that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to continue reading and yeah. um, just continue. But I know what it is. I just have to just keep continuing to focus. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> But again, you have to, it is very hard to build if you're surrounded by people that are trying to tear you down. It's like you climbing up the ladder and then somebody's pulling on your foot. You got to surround your people that surround yourself with people that are in support of you and who want to push you further, not tear you down. Like I'm just I'm sorry, I'm just I'm just shocked and blown no, I understand. about living an abundance life. 
I get what you're saying, but the good thing is I have family members who are more supportive. Good. You know, not well, just the ones that's around that I'm around. Right. But in general, that's their mindset. You know, their mindset. If you go to a religious organization, their focus is not to uh, focus on wealth. Um, you know, that's often talked about. So you kind of have to be. No, I agree free. with you. Listen, I agree with you 100%, Rochelle, because I used to go to some churches mm-hmm. and um, yeah, they weren't talking about prosperity and they, uh, they were talking about exactly what you're saying. And guess what I did? Left that damn church. Because now you're speaking against what the Bible preaches. And these same churches are the one asking you for all the money. Yeah, they need money, but it's not yeah. it's not it's that all right easy. for the church and the pastor to live an abundant prosperity lifestyle, but then the congregation is over here struggling. Try- Don't get me started. Okay, this conversation with left. I'm sorry, y'all. Go ahead. Um, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> before I start to run around this house, because we we preaching today. We, this is a whole sermon. Oh my God. But it's your, I just, in closing, because it's 102, we went over. In closing, seriously, be, work on having an abundant mindset. That's the word for today. Work on having an abundance mindset. Work on fixing and reversing your limiting beliefs by replacing it with a positive affirmation. Always focus on prosperity and be aware of your surroundings. If you are in a toxic environment where they are going against what I just said, you need to make some adjustments if you wanna be successful in planet marketing because you can't get to the top with a scarcity mindset. And if someone is constantly poisoning your mind, you gotta reevaluate that. Change your circle, change your life, all right? Thank you all for your time today. I'll be back on Tuesday. So everyone have an amazing, amazing week and weekend. I hope to see some of y'all at Seven Figure Success School. I'll be leaving out tomorrow morning. So I hope to see you there. Love y'all. Bye. Thank you so much. God bless.